Welcome um, to a webinar in Gender Studies. Uh, my name is Therese and I'm a Communications Officer. And I'm here with Osa Karin, who is the Programme Director, and Edita, who is the Study Director. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves a bit more in depth uh, before we go on. Uh, Osa Karin, would you like to start? Yes, sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Osa Karin Engstam, Programme Director, and um, I'm my research interest is also very much in equality issues in organizations in a broad sense. And I'm very happy to be in the program director for this program now for five years. Thanks. Edita, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, my name is uh, Edita Just. I'm a senior lecturer in gender studies at Link Shopping. So the study director of this program and my field of expertise is gender studies and medical humanities. Excellent. Well, sounds it'd be really interesting to, to hear more about your, your interests and, and about the program. Um, let's start um, talking about the program, um, gender studies. Um, what does it mean? What, 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 why do we need uh, to have a master's in gender studies? Edita, would you like to start since you're on the screen? Yes, of course I can. Well, uh, we got involved in gender studies uh, 20 years ago uh, when I went to Utrecht University in the uh, Netherlands. And uh, well, uh, I know it may be a big thing to say, but it has changed the world uh, for me back then in uh, 1999. And uh, since that time, I'm committed to gender studies on the uh, academic level, but also teaching, learning nonstop uh, myself, but also um, actively trying to do also activist work. So I think what is, could be many things that be said, but I think what is really important is that studying gender studies gives you uh, a great lens to look at the world around. And it not only helps you to detect different kinds of uh, exclusion, uh, discrimination, or marginalization, but it also teaches you how to bring the marginalized voices to the fore. And at the same time, uh, puts the lenses against you in a sense that you became uh, self reflective the critical knowledge, but also creative knowledge. What can we do? How can we combat certain things? And how we can introduce um, change? And for 20 years, I'm trying to do that. And I'm looking forward to sharing that passion and uh, inspiration with you. Also wanting to be inspired by you. Excellent. That, that, great. What's that card in? Um... As Edita mentioned, uh, change. The program is called Intersectionality and Change. Will you tell us a bit more about the program? Yes, and we also very much focus on students becoming agents of change. Uh, we want to enable students to act as change agents, um, especially then with regard to intersectionality and its various dimensions. We are very interested in in focusing on various power differentials that make an impact on our lives and and, uh, and, and in society. We, we focus on ethnicity, sexuality, class, age, disability, uh, also in, in order to understand uh, also what Edita said, problematic aspects uh, in society and in, in organizations. So the focus is very much on focusing on Coming agents for change, but also um, changing, also as Edita somewhat pointed out, uh, changing ourselves and also um, developing ourselves in that sense, uh, also empowering ourselves in order to be able also to empower others. So, uh, that being said, there are various dimensions also in, in this program, not only that students are expected to read and write and analyze, etc., but also to develop themselves very much in interaction with faculty, the teachers, 
but also with other students and to learn from each other and from the various social locations that students are in, because this is a highly international program, both student-wise and teacher-wise. So that's okay. not long, yeah. question, long answer to that question. No, 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 it's, it's good. It's, it's good. It sounds, it sounds really um, both interdisciplinary, um, but, but also international. Um, I, I saw you, you brought the curriculum. Uh, maybe we should have a look and see through which courses the students uh, learn this and, and uh, apply it. Yes, as you see here in the left hand column, it starts with an introduction to intersectional gender and the uh, autumn term starts uh, next year, uh, August 23. And um, we have a non-campus period uh, during that course as well, uh, approximately one week, uh, in which we meet for the first time. And, and, and that is really important uh, to do that. And then it continues with a more in-depth analysis of intersectionality in the next course. And it continues in analytical tools with more methodological focus, how to carry out analysis in practice. And for the second semester, then we move into more on working life issues and, and uh, how to uh, develop professionally in the career path course. Uh, after that course, which is also um, involving a, an on-campus uh, period, we move into analyzing change course, as you mentioned. I mean, change is a key aspect in this course. And here we go into depth what is meant by change, how can we understand it theoretically, but also practically. And uh, the semester ends with uh, the first master thesis and uh, the defense and opposition then is on campus. So uh, if you uh, want to graduate, you can do that after the first year, or if you feel that you want more, you can continue to the second year. And then that we need more specific focus in the courses. The first course, as you see here, is focused on social movements, various social movements that we, we can see within the, not only feminist movements as such, but uh, various broad social uh, movements and also the historical development of that. And in the second part of, of that semester, you can also choose. We have elective courses to broaden to, to um, see that all students can get their interests fulfilled. So we have feminist environment, environmental humanities, equality and justice and organization, feminist pedagogy, or you can even also do an internship. So um, uh, after that, the, the, the last semester is then focused on theories and methodologies, and that is also very much linked to the second master thesis. Uh, which is more qualified than the first master thesis. So that is basically the, <laughs> the outline of the program. And you, of course, you can read more about the specific courses on the website where you have a description of them. So basically everybody does a, a master's thesis one and a master's thesis two. So everybody does that no matter if they do one or two years. No, if you do the one year master, you just do one thesis. But if you do the, the two year, you do both. Yes. Yeah, you do both then. Excellent. And, and you, you mentioned uh, internship. What, what kind of internships are available? Well, the student is um, uh, arranging the internship uh, band the, themselves. So uh, in, in that could be in dialogue also with uh, the program director, of course. And we also have suggestions for internship because we have contacts with uh, labor market and organizations. So we can also give students uh, tips about uh, specific internships. Uh, and, and, and that is a course also because you report about your experiences of that internship. So that is a way of actually trying out what you have learned, what students have learned uh, on the program so far in an actual working environment. Okay. But you, you do uh, have suggestions for students who want to do internships so you can help them approach um, places or... 
Yes, that, but that would be in, in Sweden in that respect. Yeah. So if students, mm -hmm. otherwise students often find their own internships in dialogue, of course, uh, with, with the uh, program director in terms of what can be appropriate, when to do it. I mean, sometimes you maybe you have to extend the period, for example, and how can that be done? So that could always be in dialogue, of course. Mm -hmm. And how is this program tied in with research we do at the university? Um, I know that the, the D Department of Thematic Studies is, is very um, research focused um, and we do have a center for, for gender studies, do we not? Yes, Edita, uh, would you like to just mention yeah, about I can, the... I can... Yeah, I can say a couple of things because what is also important for us is that the students get really very well-rounded uh, education. So, uh, um, uh, Osakarin is mentioning, well, or next to it actually, uh, all the teachers who are teaching are um, doing research. So, so, so the thing is that we also also try to uh, encourage our students. We've made up our minds. We're going to do new. Try to encourage our students uh, to uh, well go to conferences, or we try to give them tips, basically what can be done or what could be of their interest. So uh, we have like three uh, major research areas and one centers around decolonial uh, feminist studies. The another is built around gender and nature and the body and to look how the body and non-human bodies, um, human bodies, technology and culture kind of uh, one another. And then the third uh, research area is, we call it Bodies Hub, when we basically focus on the body, our techno science, but also medicine, and to see like uh, how the questions that we are asking about the medicine or technology or the bodies create the bodies. So uh, in this sense, uh, we try to, that our teaching is really well informed by the research, uh, and at the same time, encouraging students to participate in different activities, um, not only teaching learning um, uh, activities. Great, great. That's, it's interesting. Um, what sets this program apart? Um, I mean, I assume there are lots of universities uh, across the world offering this program or similar program in gender studies. What, what sets this one apart? Well, we, would, we always like to stress the blended character that we have. I mean, it's online, but it's also, uh, we also meet for the, the on-campus period. So that's one thing. And also the highly interdisciplinary character of the program. So if you feel that, okay, so I have a bachelor in sociology, I have a bachelor in law, I have a bachelor in business administration, it's all fine. And that is something also that we encourage to learn also from each other's or, um, educational backgrounds. So uh, I would say that kind of interdisciplinarity is key here, I think, uh, to this problem, and, or, uh, to this program. And also, I think that by focusing on intersectionality, we bring that up uh, as much as we can in the different courses, but you also problematize it and complexify it. And I think that is also one key feature of this program. Um, uh, yes, that was one of, 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 of the major things that I think uh, is, is specific for our program. And of course, the connection to the, the uh, high quality reach of environment that uh, we have at the Gender Studies Unit. Um, to, to kind of tie into this uh, a little bit, uh, actually, Edita, uh, were you about to say something about the, the, the what's unique about this program? Yes. Uh, what I wanted to add to what Osakarin said, 
is um, that we all, well, we also find it uh, highly important is that the very fact that it's a hybrid education, so we have a combination of online teaching together uh, with the uh, meeting on campus, allows many students from different geopolitical locations to participate and that also makes it extremely transnational and in that sense it kind of um, enables a very robust teaching environment when students may learn from each other from experiences and as you know in gender studies experience is the core is one of the cores of our reflection um, so that's why it makes it much more engaging and interesting for students when they are able to share different knowledges coming from different contexts and geopolitical locations so i think that this is a really big bonus of that uh, program thank you um i think you know talking about this the background the different backgrounds of the students and um mm -hmm. could we could we move on to uh ideal student not ideal student but but who what kind of person would benefit the most ideal student in terms from from their own background and perspectives and everything who would come to this program and think yeah and 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 really uh thrive what kind of background what's that starting would you like to start yes i would like to say that anyone who has a passionate interest for gender studies and also intersectionality. I mean, this is the perfect program. I mean, also, I think that students who love to write, to read a lot, um, and to engage also in creativity in terms of writing and, uh, and, and um, creativity in terms of methodological ways of exploring, etc. That is exactly uh, the students that I think will thrive in this in this environment. I would say that so, because there is a lot of writing going on and there is a lot of, of, of reading. So, so and I would say that students who are interested in that would will find this program very exciting. But also in terms of experiences experiencing um, different kinds of pedagogical formats. And also, I think that if you like to engage, because this is the online, because of the online format, it's good if you're interested in engaging in, for example, um, uh, online activities also among students, because students often uh, create their own online environments in order to stay in touch, etc. So uh, technological skills and, and being interested in that is also, of course, uh, um, uh, relevant. So basically, you, you know, you could have a background as a um, in humanities, or you could be an engineer. Um, it's the it's the passion and the interest that we're looking for, and and the ability to to write and read a lot. Yes, social sciences and humanities, that is what we are focusing on. But the thing is that writing and reading and also, of course, discussing, I mean, wanting to discuss and engage in dialogue about often also uh, certain challenging subjects, because we all touch upon on those in this program, but not being afraid of, of engaging in such a, a conversation with teachers, but also with other students i think that that mm -hmm. is key mm -hmm. um it's a it's a distance program um how what, what are the challenges that their students tend to 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 encounter um in that format edita would you like to answer yeah uh the thing is that i mean of course now in the pandemia times we had for a moment to move it online fully but the the whole idea is that it's a hybrid and it's really crucial so basically um by for the students coming to the face-to-face -face weeks um now we have like three times per year 
during the academic year, uh, this is the moment to get to know each other, to really feel that it's tangible, it's real, those are your peers, those are your teachers. So actually also when students come, we try to do social activities together, we go for uh, lunch together or dinner together to kind of create real bonds to know to to kind of like you know give it a bit of a gravity but um and that's why of coming to the campus but then during the online um basically uh, you don't only have pre-recorded lectures so you have uh, live me moments and meetings during the seminars with teachers where you can post questions and feel the connection is basically every week there is a seminar or every two weeks depending on the course but also students work in a group so also when you are asking what kind of students we would welcome so those are also students who can work uh, independently can be their own bosses a bit to motivate themselves, but at the same time who can work in a group because those co-tutor group uh, that we, we call them co-tutor tutor groups, uh, they work their whole program. So this also enables students to be in touch to form ones, uh, because we also recognize that community building is very important for gender studies in general, but also for staying connected and motivated in particular. So, so in this sense, um, we find it very important to keep that motivation, to feel that students are connected with themselves, but also with us. So we also approach students as not just somebody on a screen, but as real embodied and embedded uh, students. So, we also try to keep in touch. So when students ask us questions, we always try to respond with the email, etc. So we encourage students to get in touch if there is a question about the lecture or about the seminar so that they feel that we care. They are very visible to us, even if they are on the screen most of the time. It sounds like quite a, a good experience uh, that, that you have uh, in these times at the moment when everybody is moving digitally, you know, how to stay connected and how to, to, to get that kind of feeling, group feeling, really. Yeah. I mean, Teresa, Thanks we've to... been doing it now like for eight, nine years. So actually, <laughs> in India, I mean, like kind of hit us too, we are kind of really well skilled to uh, do online education. That's, that's true also. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot to learn from you, basically. Um, I believe Luke has just uh, let me know that we have lots of questions already. Um, so I figured we'll move on to uh -huh. the questions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you yeah, know, we, we have a few more things that we haven't covered, but the questions might, might actually touch upon those areas. So Luke, let's... Let's start with the first question. Okay, let's dive in. Thank you. Yes, indeed, we have a good amount of questions from the audience. Thanks, everybody, for uh, having uh, those questions ready for us. Um, great. So, uh, of course, we want to hear from you. I will start out um, with a question from Andrew. Um, how does the program prepare the student for PhD research in the area of gender studies? Quite a bit general, um, but I don't know if you can say something briefly about that. Mm, also, Kari, would you like to answer that one? Yes, I would say that the program is actually um, preparing students both for PhD stu studies as well as for work uh, outside of academia. So, uh, for example, I would say that the courses on the second year especially uh, is focused on on preparing for PhD studies because um, then this, the courses are more specialized and you can also specialize yourself uh, uh, in the various research subjects also uh, that that are um, th that that the teachers are involved in. So that would be my answer to that. The courses, especially on the second year, and also of course when you write the the second master thesis. That is also a very fine opportunity to be prepared for PhD studies. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Great. I hope that answered that question. Um, otherwise, let us know. Another question from Paras Kevi, if I say that right. Is it possible to start with a one-year program and then change to a two-year 
uh, the second year at the, some later point. Uh, Edita? Yes. Oh, also got it. Sorry. Oh. Yes. Oh. yes. Yeah, we both say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. it's possible. It's just it's just one thing that it's it's it can be a good idea not to graduate them after the first year because of administrative issues. But, but otherwise, it's it's possible. So you you could in a way, you know, do the first year and then three years later realize, oh, actually, I do want to do the second year and come back mm -hmm. and do the second year. Yeah, theoretically, yes. Theoretically, you could. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, great. Question from Schiller. Um, she's thanking for the webinar, first of all. Well, thank you for joining. Um, is this program only available full time, 100%? Um, yes, it is the short answer. Yes, okay. Okay. not a second or second. Yes, it's a full-time program. Great, thank you. Um, Matilda is asking, what does this program make an MSc instead of an MA, Master of Arts? Is it more focused on the quantitative method and data? Can you say something about that? Was that, was that quite it? Yeah, good question. There has been a discussion about that at university, how, what to call it, etc. But I wouldn't pay too much attention to that in terms of what is taught in the program. So uh, I would say that, of course, there is a focus on, on, on social sciences, but not in, in terms of quantitative methods or anything like that. And also, the, the, the big benefit of this is that the possibilities for students to design their own uh, thesis project, for example, and even also focusing on certain uh, subjects in their final assignments during different courses opens up also for, for uh, very much freedom, I would say, in terms of when it comes to, for example, uh, literature studies, etc. So that is my answer to that. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor okay. Karen. Good. Um, another question from, um, let's see, Salome. And she's asking, is this career path and professional communication mandatory for all students? Who would like Clarice? to answer that one? Yeah, I could uh, answer that. The question, Luke, could you repeat the question? Because I think I got a bit of a, like a break in or delay. Okay, so the question is, is the career path and professional communication mandatory for all students? Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a mandatory course. It's a mandatory course. However, uh, if I can just add something to it, uh, it may sound a bit neoliberal for the gender studies students here or those interested, but we actually are trying to problematize uh, the whole concept of a career and uh, communication. So basically uh, with this course, we have, uh, we use lots of creative methods uh, to try to reflect how can we be agents of change in the contemporary times. Thank you. Thanks. I hope that answered that. Question um, from Natalie. Um, in uh, addition to what you already have said, how is this program really different and compares to other programs within gender studies and intersectionality? Um, also, Karin, you, we, we touched upon that earlier. Um, maybe we should do a quick recap of, of what we said. Yes, I would say, I, of course, the, the hybrid or blended format, I would say that is one sort of, of uh, distinctive uh, difference. Uh, and also, I think the, as I mentioned, also the interdisciplinary character and also the international environment in terms of uh, uh, teachers and also the strong connection to uh, the research environment that we have in the uh, Genus uh, unit. 
Thanks. We mentioned before, Edita, when we were talking earlier about also the the opportunity, I thought the possibility for students to do this program without changing um, their living circumstances um, drastically. Like, you know, if you go somewhere and you do a master's program for two years on campus, you, you have to pay for, you know, housing, you, you have to um, change a lot uh, in, in your life. Whereas this, with this hybrid uh, approach, you 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 can do it the distance part, but but also be um, be on uh, be, be on campus every now and then. Yeah. I think editor disappeared there for a while, but I can uh, second that definitely. Um, uh, what you just said. Yes, I think we lost editor, didn't we? Uh, right. Well, we'll move on to the next question. I think editor will will she can chip in when when she appears again. Yep, I'm working with her. She will come back. Um, Alessandra has a question about the on-campus sessions. How many on-campus sessions are there needed to be attended for the 120 credit master? I think also, also mm -hmm. Karin, it's... Yes, so there is uh, three uh, periods uh, the first year and also um, three the second year. But in case you cannot come, I mean, things happen, uh, you can always have a, a compensatory assignment to make up for the sort of absence. But of course, we want everyone to be here in terms of, I mean, not only for for it being like a mandatory thing, you could get the credits, etc., but also for meeting everyone. So, um, yeah. And I assume that currently we we have other um, options in place with with the pandemic. Yes, now of course it's a specific, but we all hope that things will go back more or less to normal this autumn and next autumn. So basically, mm. this is what we what we have to talk about because uh, mm. otherwise it will be a more um, non mainstream um, situation mm. for the program. I should add also that when it comes to the master thesis, uh, the defense and opposition are always on campus and they cannot be compens compensated for as the on the other on campus periods because you you will review another thesis and you will also defend your own thesis. And that you need to do in relation to some other student. Mm. Thank you. Oh, Luke? Okay. Yes, sure. We still have many more questions coming in. Very <laughs> popular, this program, I can see, and a lot of people uh, show interest and are thanking for the webinar. So is Baraka. Baraka is saying um, thank you for this because uh, I feel this is, program is very useful in today's world. He himself is a Bachelor of Arts and um, an officer in health and programs in Tanzania. He likes to know if there's a ex accessibility to full scholarship um, so he could apply to the course. Is that an option? Can you say something about that, the scholarships? Uh, maybe I should briefly briefly mention we do have some scholarships. Um, I don't know. Do you know, Osakar, if you awarded any mm hundred -hmm. percent scholarships? No, the they are not hundred percent. No. So generally, they tend to be about fifty percent tuition fee waivers. Um, and to be eligible to apply, uh, you need to have applied on time, which is fifteenth of January, and then submit all the all the relevant documents uh, by early February. And you also need to have selected this program as your first priority when you apply through universityadmissions.se. Um, but but ask us questions um, throughout the the application process if you get stuck. Um, but I think they are limited. You might have one. Do you have one or two on this program? Do you, do you know either of you? Uh, I think it depends. Uh, it can vary, but maximum two. Mm. So it's quite competitive. Uh, next, next question, Luke. Oh, there we go. 
Yes, indeed, I was muted. Um, we have a question from Danielle, and she likes to know what's the difference in qualification uh, that you're awarded if you do one or two years? Is there a difference? Um, I believe so. Or Sakari, would you like to answer? No, it's just. It's it's just stipulated that it's one year and, sec and two year. And the the biggest difference I think was is in for, for the the Swedish students because then it's called magister and master. But it's in in the Swedish English uh, languages master, one year master and two year master. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And a question from Anna, is there any application fee for EU citizens to enter the university? And secondly, as well, how many times do we uh, during the first semester have to show up on campus, actually? I, I can answer the first part. Uh, no, there is no application fee for EU students. Um, how many times on campus? Um, shall we maybe try and get editor back in the conversation? Yes, thank you. I mean, so basically we start, the first face-to-face -face week is the introduction to intersectional gender. So this is the first time. And it's usually the August, as Osakarin was saying. Then in February for career path and professional communication. And then in June, uh, the first year, for the master thesis defenses, because normally defenses happen um, on campus. And for the second year, uh, is the whose story gets told, which is again uh, around August, September. Then for theories and methodologies in February, and then again in June for the defense of master thesis three, uh, two. Sorry, so three times per academic year. Thank you. Luke? Okay. So that's thank you. Uh, different uh, people were wondering about this, so I hope that answered the question about the uh, yeah needs to be present uh, besides the being an online course as well. Um, question from uh, let me see, just had it here. Yes, Candice. So um, can the internships be overseas? I think uh, also Karin spoke about that earlier, about the internships uh, tending to be in the student's home country. Was, is that correct, also Karin? Yes, yes, uh, of, absolutely. That is correct. So if you find um, an internship where you are situated, that's, that uh, can work very well. So would you say that is the most common way of doing an internship in your own country rather than actually coming to Sweden? Yes, I would say that. Although we have had also, I should mention that we have actually had quite a few students who have actually moved to Sweden for this program, but it's not uh, uh, um, so common, but it has happened. It has happened. Yeah. Yeah, and I think they, they tend to be European students as as um, it's difficult with a, with a residence permit for a distance program for non-EU students. Yes, correct. Luke? Yes, so just to make sure some people were uh, asking about the chance to do it completely online uh, due to especially the current situation. Um, so is that the possibility at all? Yes, we have, of course, made amendments due to the COVID situation. So, for example, this year we had the on-campus period in, in August online, but it was live. Uh, and uh, we will also have them um, uh, online for the February periods. So, of course, amendments are made uh, due to the uh, COVID situation. But generally, so we, we, if I understand it right, when you explained this earlier, is that if, if there's an individual who really struggles to, to make it to Sweden, they can be accommodated, but not for the thesis, defense and opposition. That needs to be done. Yes, campus. if we talk, if we, if we talk about non-pandemic situation, there is always a possibility of uh, getting the credits that are connected to the on-campus period and the participation here 
uh, in other ways. So uh, I, I just want to say that student, a prospective student shouldn't think that, okay, I will not attend because I will not be able to attend all periods, for example. So that should not be um, something that stops students, except for the master thesis defense, I should say. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, Maria is asking um, about the English test exam. Um, so basically, it could be that the test results also don't arrive on time uh, due to the situation. Things sometimes are delayed, especially with papers, uh, paperwork. Um, is it correct that we can submit them until February 2nd? Yes, that's true. So basically, you have to do an online application by 15th of January. Um, I don't know if it's 2nd of February for this application round or if it's 1st of February. Uh, double check on, on university admissions. Um, but yes, all the, all the paperwork uh, needs to be submitted by then. So you have a couple of weeks extra. OK, I hope that answered the question. Um, this point is asking about the requirements um, to enter the program. Is it correct that I need 30 credits on gender, or on gender studies or relevant work experience? No, uh, for, for this application period, this requirement has been removed. So now it's only a BA requirement in social sciences or humanities. Do students uh, submit a letter of intent to, to show their, uh, the, the reasons for wanting to study this? Yes, we encourage them to do so very much. But it's more an encouragement, it's not mandatory. No, no, it's not. It's not something that has anything to do with if you are accepted to the program or not. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, a question from Schiller is how many lectures and seminars are there per week? And maybe tied into that from another person was asking, is it still possible to work besides, uh, yeah, do, doing the program or how many hours uh, is it really in total? Well, we, um, Edith, do you want to? Uh, okay, uh, I mean, it, um, it, it really depends, of course, uh, on the course. But normally, uh, most of the courses have one pre-recorded, I mean, those who run online, uh, one pre-recorded lecture that you can watch whenever you want. And then a co-tutor group uh, that is live with your peers and also the seminar, which is optional. I mean, highly encouraged by optional. So uh, most of our students actually well work. Uh, but at the so, of course, you need to uh, motivate yourself and, and you really need to work hard. But we know, like most of them, as I said, uh, are working. So it's possible to, to combine it. How many hours a week do, would you suggest uh, students need to spend on reading and writing and the seminars and, and, and lectures? With, 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 also, Karin? Yes, I mean it is full time, but of yeah. course we can we, we we wouldn't say that you work eight to seven. Sorry, five eight to five. <laughs> it's not like that because you can work in the weekends if you want to. You can work nights if you want to. So, mm -hmm. um, for example, when Edita talked about uh, there is a pre-recorded lecture about one hour, you can watch it on Monday. You can watch it whenever you like. You watch it nine o'clock in the evening. And then you meet with your peers, for example, on Wednesday for an mm -hmm. hour or so. And then you meet all, you can also attend the seminar, usually on a Friday, for example, for an hour. And, and as Edita said, this is not mandatory, but of course we, we want uh, students to participate in it. Mm -hmm. In between that, you have also assignments that you need to attend to, uh, reflection papers uh, to write, and also towards the end of the course, preparing for the final assignment. Uh, so, uh, but the, the 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 positive thing is that that you are free to to very much free, I would say, to uh, manage your own time, and that of course can be a challenge. I mean, 
sometimes it's better to be like oh to have more structured environment mm -hmm. so but in a sense that could also be good if you if you have the possibility to do that so. thank you great thank mm -hmm. you and also, and just to add yeah, to that, um, and just uh, sorry, sorry, just to quickly add to that, and also for the final examination, uh, we have like a general submission, and then also two catch-up periods. So we also try to be flexible. So then, when you need to submit your final assignment, you still will have two other chances over the academic year to submit uh, without your grade being lowered. So in this sense, we also try to meet the students' needs if they work and cannot be done on time with their assignments. Okay, thank you for that addition. I hope that answered the question for students who are wondering about this. Um, we have another question from Rim. Uh, Rim is asking, do you have an approximate number how many graduates from this program end up working in governmental or intergovernmental agencies? Anything about the jobs um, ratios afterwards? I, I, I don't dare to say that uh, in specific, but what we know is that students, I mean, some go to, to PhD studies, of course, but we also have uh, students who work both uh, for uh, public organizations as well as for nonprofits uh, and also for, uh, for private uh, organizations. But I would also like to add that because we have students who work at the same time, they are often um th this program becomes a sort of um, uh, uh, training for them in or at their current workplace so um, um many of the students have the opportunity to make use of what they learn here also uh, at the current job situation but i don't have any specific figures how many would end up in specific organizations personally. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Maria is asking, um, I'd like to know, are there suggestions uh, or mandatory topics for the master thesis? Um, or is it also freedom, there's freedom of choice for that? Hello, Sakari, would you like to answer that one? Uh, yes, I can do that. Um, yes, there is freedom of choice uh, to a very large extent, I would say. Um, of course, and also students tend to think about the thesis subject already, I would say, during the first semester, actually, especially during exploring intersectionality course, because then they can sort of dive into more into a specific uh, research field that they uh, feel more or less pa more passionate about. So, so, um, but of course, that might be a situation where there is such a spe specific uh, thesis topic that there can be um, difficulties in finding supervisor. That might happen. Uh, so, uh, but uh, as I understand it. Now, with editor can can also um, uh, clarify this. Um, it, that is that um, uh, it's very unusual that there is no supervisor because we can also use supervisors from other um, units and uh, departments at Linköping University. I mean, gender studies is not only a subject for the gender studies unit, of course. So that is good. We can collaborate with with teachers from uh, elsewhere as well. Um, can I can I just ask quickly? Uh, because you do two master theses, uh, can you do can the second one uh, be a can kind of continuation, or can you build upon the first one for the second one, or do they need to be two separate ones? Good question. This is a question that we get a lot actually. <laughs> so what we have said, yes, that is uh, possible. Let's say you wrote about leadership in, um, in intersectionality in a non-profit organization for your master thesis, the first one. And then you feel that, okay, you did an interview study, 
But of course, when you do uh, studies uh, in general, you feel that some things popped up, questions were an answer, or there were more questions that uh, came out of that particular uh, study. Then you can move on and, and um, approach those in the second master thesis. But the uh, requirements for uh, the theoretical uh, development, for example, is more, uh, the de demands are higher for the second master thesis. But mm -hmm. to follow the same subject or continue the same subject, definitely. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, um, we do have a couple of minutes more for questions. Um, there are a lot of questions still that have been unanswered. I just want to make sure uh, to, to um, explain for the people that if your answer is uh, your question is not being answered in this session, they are being recorded and they will be sent to the staff of Linköping University, so they can come back to you uh, offline, so to say. Um, after the session do give them a maybe a little bit of time of course to uh, be able to respond to you but we do um yeah have, we do have your questions um before we go over to the last questions we actually have a couple for you for the audience so we'd like to know a couple of things first of all we'd like to know if you're interested to apply at this stage We'd like to hear where you are at this stage, if you're already thinking to apply, if you're not sure yet or not yet. Thanks to make your choice, your answer of choice, and um, don't forget to hit submit. Uh, also, for the people who are watching the recording, by the way, you can join in as well. You're not excluded you can also make your choice, so please do so. Thank you. Great. While well, some people are still, we're going slowly over to the next one. There we go. We'd like to know if this session was useful for your decision making. Did this help you? Were, you, were your doubts taken care of? Um, was it useful basically for you to know if you're gonna apply or not? We'd like to know how this session was uh, basically taking care of that. Thanks for letting us know. I'll leave it for two seconds more. And then we go over to the last question of this session. And that is any other feedback. So it's, actually, it's not a question. It's any other feedback you may have <laughs> for us. Do uh, feel free to write it there. If you enjoyed the session a lot, great. Let us know. Um, we, as mentioned, you don't have to rewrite your question there if it wasn't answered because we already have them. Um, but any feedback you might have um, is welcome. Um, I'm going to switch over to one of the last questions of today. Um, Hannah was asking, how many students usually study at one time? What's that, Karin? So I would yeah. say, yeah. No, Edita, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> you, you, you start. Edita, I think your internet. Edita? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes. Can you hear me? All right. Yep. Uh, well, we we normally, I mean, we don't, it varies every year, but eventually, you, you know, so it's a difference between admitted and registered students. But normally, we have around 30, 40 students starting on the first year. Yeah. Thank you. Luke? Yes, thank you very much. Um, so that is very useful. I think that answered a lot of the questions we just got in as well for about that. Um, a bit more about the thesis. Uh, there's some unclarity. When will this thesis have to be written? Is it already in the first year, in the second semester, or is it in the second year? Can you clarify that for us? Thank you. But, um, also, Karin, this mm -hmm. time, your turn? Yes, the first thesis. Master thesis uh, is for the second half of the spring semester, year one. 
and the second master thesis is the same period, but during the second year. Thank you. Okay, great. Then we come to the last question of this session. Um, again, we will take uh, any other questions still, but offline. Um, so a question from Carmen is asking, um, in the internship, uh, will you be able to assist in that if it is in Sweden? Can you say something about this? What we have is that sometimes organizations approach us and ask us for students who are interested in, in doing internships, and then we communicate that to the students. So this is how we can help students. Uh, for example, now also during Corona, this has been made online. So, um, but of course, in under normal circumstances, that would be in Sweden. But we try to to communicate those kinds of opportunities when we uh, get um, other or when we have other organizations asking for for interns. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I think, I don't know if Editor wants to add anything to that. Otherwise, we slowly can round off the session. Yeah. No, I'm fine. Editor? I'm fine. Also, Karin explained well. Yes. No, also, perfect. Karin Thank explained you, it well about the last question. So it's perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Great. Thank you. And uh, yeah, as mentioned, we have some questions, but some are more personal questions, so those were not handled maybe now. Um, also, some people have actually written questions uh, before to us, and they are also uh, captured and will be sent to the appropriate persons at Linköping University. And um, for now, I would like to thank everybody for joining, for your time, um, and great to hear all the interest in this program, of course. From my end, um, yeah, also the presenters, I would like to thank them for their time. And uh, maybe last word, well, over to you, Therese, uh, to, to round off the session. And uh, yeah, hope to see you yeah. maybe on, well, online or in Sweden for uh, the students in the coming year. Thanks, Luke, and, and thanks for your excellent moderation, the questions. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm just going to do a brief uh, overview of the application process, because I think that's uh, that is important. Um, the, the deadline is 15th of January, and you then apply online at universityadmissions.se. Uh, you can apply to other Swedish universities, and you can choose up to four programs. Um, but that must be done on time. Uh, you then have until early February, first, second, third, it, it's different uh, different years, um, to submit the, the supporting documents. So that would be your, your transcript, for example. That would be your English test, which has to be submitted by then. Um, so you, you're not able to bring that with you when you've been accepted. That's part of the evaluation. Um, and then you, you also, if you're, uh, you, you have to show whether you're exempt from fees or not. Um, and the fees are about 8,000 euros per year. Application fee is about 90 euros, 100 euros. Um, and that applies to non-EU students. Um, so that's the, that's the application process. You then find out in early April if you've been admitted or not. Um, you can find a lot more info at lau.sc slash education. Uh, it's how to apply, um, more about the program, um, lot, lots of useful information. Um, you should also connect with us uh, on Facebook or on Instagram. Uh, Facebook is uh, Bing University. Um, and Instagram, I think, uh, especially you have, uh, we have students uh, running it. So you see a lot of lean shopping, which you you won't be here to to uh, uh, to live here full time, but you'd still get a glimpse of, of the place that you do need to visit. Um, but we do have, for example, one student is from the gender studies program, um, and you can see uh, she's she's moved to Sweden, but you can see her her take on, on being here. But you can also connect with the students that way. And we also have a blog, uh, blog.liu.se, um, international students. And again, one student writing there is a student in, in gender studies. So so see what our students say um, and, and connect with us and ask us questions. Uh, and uh, thank you for, for joining us. Um, also, Karin, Edita, would you, would you like to say a final word? 
No, basically just welcome with your application. Editor? Oh, um, the same. We are looking forward to welcome you to Lean Shopping. We, again, we hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. We, we hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.